Today I'm making two mallets, one to use here in the shop and then one to give away as a gift. Now the style I'm going with is this particular style right here to where the handle and mallet are not glued together. This is just friction fit and the handle is a rectangular profile that is tapered top to bottom. I like the rectangular profile because if you relax your fingertips to your thumb, the shape in, in here, in my case anyway, is more rectangular than it is round. So just the rectangular profile handle feels a whole lot better in my hand than uh, a round handle. A little bit more familiar in my opinion anyway. Uh, and then also, because there's a taper in here top to bottom, if you grab it the wrong way, that you can instantly feel that taper and it doesn't feel um, as familiar as your normal grip, so you know no matter what, which way to hold it, no matter which way you set it down on the bench. So you're always good to go. Now, the reason I like a two-piece design instead of a, one that's glued in place is that if this mallet head gets destroyed, let's say it gets cracked down the middle and breaks into a couple pieces, then you don't have to remake an entirely new mallet, just remake the mallet head, and you still can use that same handle that you're comfortable with and you're already familiar with. So just remake a new mallet head and you're back in business. To make the first mallet, I'm using oak. This is a piece of scrap oak. It's got some defects, but I think there's enough, actually I know there's enough space over here to make a handle. Now the mallet head is this big block of oak that I have. I think it's about three inches square. I haven't measured it yet, but I do know that all four of these long grain faces are nice and square to one another. The end grain faces, which will be the business end of the mallet, both of these are not square. So I've determined which side will be the top. And now I just need to use the miter saw to put a slight taper on both of these faces uh, that will be doing the work. This particular miter saw has a very flimsy insert plate. And then also the insert plate is lower than the height of the tabletop here. So the smaller the piece, the more tendency this has to want to rock like so, which is obviously dangerous. So I put together a couple pieces of scrap plywood to act as a sacrificial table and a fence and this will give me a lot more support to make this cut a little bit safer. I've already taken the time to mark the center line on all four of these faces all the way around the mallet head and also found the center point on both the top and bottom. And this is the point and center line that I'll use to lay out the mortise for the handle. Now, of course, I need a handle first. So I'm gonna take this scrap piece of, of oak here and try and get a nice straight grain piece for the handle. Now you can mark this out uh, for whatever shape that you want. I think about 14 inches, I have a half of an inch taper top to bottom. For me, it's just going to be easier to uh, to draw the same one, trace the same one that I already have. Now, obviously, you don't have this one, so I will provide the measurements for this handle if you want to make the exact same mallet, and those will be in the website article for this video. So now I can cut this out on the bandsaw. I'll clean up both of the bandsaw cuts with a plane, making sure to plane in the downhill direction. With the handle complete, I can now determine what thickness of the handle I want to pass through the head of the mallet. And there's no need for me to have this that long of a handle like I had previously. So I'm actually gonna shoot for somewhere along the middle and have the bottom of the mallet about, or bottom of the mortise about this thickness and the top of the mortise about this thickness right here. What that does is it gives me enough handle down here to use. Uh, I don't use the long extension part of the handle uh, in, its, in, the, in the previous one. So this will be just fine. And it also gives me a little bit of leeway because if I make the mortise a little bit too large on accident, then I could just slide the handle down a little bit more and then cut off what I need. So hopefully I will be good on the first try though. There's many different ways to transfer the width for the bottom mortise and the top mortise to the mallet head. But what I'm going to use is a pair of dividers. Now you, if you don't have a pair of dividers, you can use a uh, just a regular compass. It'll do the same thing. And I'm gonna find the center point, which I've already done because it's a little finicky. 
And this tells me I'm dead center of this, which also means that the outside points here are the exact width of this section of the handle. So I can go to the bottom side and along my predetermined center point, I can mark one side and then mark the other side. And that'll give me the exact width of the bottom mortise. Now let me flip this this way and do the exact same thing for the top mortise. I've already found the center point here. If I can open these up just a little bit and that should be the exact width of the top mortise. If not, then it's close enough. So from here, I can mark one side of the top mortise and the other side right there. Now I can put the handle like so and mark my other dimensions for the mortise, both top and bottom. I use the drill press to remove the majority of the waste going about halfway through from each direction. I transferred the top and bottom mortise locations all the way around the mallet head and what that does is it gives me a visual representation of the taper on the outside front and back faces of the mallet and what this allows me to do is as I'm chiseling down and removing the material inside the mortise all I have to do is visually line my chisel up with those taper lines and that same taper will be transferred into the mallet or into the mortise I should say. So I could hold this in place with a hold fast, but I think that might just be in the way in a couple situations. So I'm not going to do that. And instead I've clamped a piece of plywood in my leg vise and it sits proud of the surface by about an inch or two. And from here I can clamp the mallet head to this piece of plywood. And this does a couple things. Number one, it keeps my top surface nice and clean. There's nothing in my way for me to chisel. And I can also see both of the tapers on both sides and also it positions the mallet head right on top of the leg of my workbench, which is the strongest point and typically where you'd want to be doing mortising anyway. I'm using a wider chisel to establish the perimeter of the mortise, and once that is established, then I can use a smaller chisel to remove the bulk of the material going about halfway through from each direction. Now I realize this is one of those situations where I'm using a mallet to make a mallet, but it's not necessary. You could also use a, a hammer if you wanted to. Now these particular chisels that I'm using are impact resistant, so a hammer won't damage them. But if you are using wooden handle chisels, uh, just be careful not to go too crazy because you may actually damage the handles of your chisels. Just wanted to throw that out there. The inside of the mallet head doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be free of any obstruction for the, uh, the handle. So this looks all right, and the handle, the handle fits, but it's awfully tight. I could probably wedge that home, but uh, that, that's awfully tight. So instead of uh, messing around with the sides of the mortise, I think it'll be a lot easier to just make a couple passes with a hand plane to bring the handle down to an appropriate size. Okay, that's a, that's a much better fit. Just a couple passes with a hand plane. Now I can drive this all the way home as far as it'll go. And that looks like it's about, a, about three quarters of an inch past my reference line uh, that I originally measured for the bottom thickness. So I did make the mortise a little bit larger than what I thought I would. Uh, but that's okay, I have plenty of extra room. Now the bottom of the handle is about as long as I want it to be. That's a, that's a good length. I obviously have a bunch of leftover here at the top of the handle, so I'll use uh, an engineer square, which I think has a thickness of about an eighth of an inch. And I'll mark this eighth of an inch on the top of the handle, and then just trim that off, probably at the bandsaw. So this mallet is done minus the chamfer on all of the edges. I'm going to use about a 1 8 of an inch chamfer on all of the edges just to break them off a little bit and then maybe round them over slightly with some sandpaper. 
I don't want to go for a full round over because I like the look of the straight lines that this style mallet has. And you know what, this is a small mallet. It's a lot smaller than this one, but the head is is a little bit beefier and it's oak. I don't know what hardwood this is, but it's not that heavy. So this guy is, um, it's exactly what I was looking for. All of the weight in the head of the mallet. So it's, it's not balanced at all. All of the weight is in the business end. This one is kind of balanced. When you choke up on the handle, it, uh, it's actually handle heavy. So I want all of the weight and momentum to be in the mallet head, and I think I've got it with this one. The next one is going to be very similar to this. However, I'm gonna use power tools to make pretty much the whole thing, and that will allow me to uh, miter the interior pieces. The head of the mallet is going to be a lamination of multiple pieces. I can miter that taper very easily, and uh, that will make the whole process go by a lot faster, and I can have a little bit more creative control with how the mallet looks. So stay tuned for the next mallet. So this is the first mallet that I made earlier and the second mallet that I said I was going to make ended up being five mallets. That one 15 inch section of four quarter walnut ended up yielding enough material to make five mallets. Now I kind of stretched that material out as best I could. So that means some of these have some defects. None of these are absolutely perfect and they're not the same size at all. Uh, but that's okay because their main job is to just whack the end of chisels and they'll do that just fine. So as you can see they are pretty much all the same width but the length of the mallet head is all different and also the length of the handles is all different as well. But that's okay. Uh, so anyway, whether you have a solid block of wood to make your own mallet head by chiseling a mortise or you, or you uh, laminate a couple pieces together to make your own mallet head, the process is relatively simple. And uh, also on all of these, I made a chamfer on every one of the edges uh, with a laminate trim router and my workbench vise upside down to kind of act as a quick uh, mini router table. And then I came back with some 220 grit sandpaper to just kind of finesse the lines just a little bit more. But anyway, I'm going to put some probably Danish oil on these, whatever type of finish I have that needs to be used up on my finishing supply rack within the next couple days. And then these will, uh, these will find a new home. I'm going to give all of these away. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. You guys take care and have a great day.